uh, Dr. Abraham Matthew from, uh, from Bangalore uh, are joining with us to uh, share the word today. Hallelujah. So it, it, it's a great privilege in our life to I mean, uh, welcome uh, Pastor, I mean, Dr. Uh, Abraham Matthew with us this morning. And also he is a, he's a senior minister of uh, uh, Indian Pentecostal Church of God. And currently he is working uh, as the principal of uh, the New Life Bible College, Bangalore. Amen. And he had been uh, ministering in Gulf countries and uh, in India and uh, 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 for uh, for many years and used by the mighty I mean mightily by God uh, to for the for the expansion of the kingdom of God Hallelujah and he is blessed with uh, a blessed wife uh, dear Alice and she is with us now I think uh, and uh, I mean she is there and uh, three children all of them are dedicated uh, uh, for the ministry uh, in the various capacities Hallelujah Moreover. Uh, dear pastor and family um, has been an, an intimate family, uh, a friend of us. I mean, and uh, and he has been an inspiration for uh, us in our ministry while we were in Bangalore. Hallelujah! He's a blessed man of God, and he's a I mean, I mean, a dedicated man of God for the for the name of the Lord. And uh, I mean, he 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 gave us the inspiration uh, to work for the Lord, how to do the ministry, and how to I mean, I mean, be useful for the kingdom of God. So that is the inspiration that we get from that pastor, dear pastor and family. Hallelujah! So we are so thankful to God for dear pastor, and it's a pleasure to have. Uh, uh, you pastor with us uh, 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 this morning joining together and let us sit in the presence of God with uh, uh, a prayerful attitude and uh, let's all put our hands together uh, and welcome Pastor Abraham Matthew today this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A greetings to you all in the matchless name of our great Lord and Master Jesus Christ. It's my great joy and honor to come to Eternal Life Church of God in Sacramento, California. This is the first time I'm coming to you. I praise God for the wonderful man of God who is your pastor, Pastor Sam Kriti Matthew. He is a friend of our family for a long time and also a co-worker in the ministry for long years. Uh, we have a very good relationship with uh, Pastor Sam Kriti and his wife Tracy and, uh, and their children. They have been wonderfully used for the kingdom here in Bangalore. And by the plan and purpose of God, God has taken them to uh, USA. And you are blessed to have him as your pastor. Because I admire him for his prayer life. He's a man of prayer and fasting. That is his strength which has helped him to do effective ministry while he was in Bangalore and in other places of India. This morning... It's a good time for you all because it is 10 o'clock or 10.30 in the morning, time to hear God's word. But for us, it is 11 o'clock, 11.30, yeah, 11 o'clock, past 11 o'clock, clock in the night. It's a good time to preach also because all the people around us are sleeping now. Hallelujah. So let us preach peacefully. Um, uh, this morning, uh, uh, I bring our special greetings from my family and uh, and Bangalore, warm greetings from Bangalore. My wife Alice is with me. Uh, she has been working as a nurse, but uh, when we received the call for the ministry some 20 years back, we, both, of them, both of us uh, resigned our job and came to the ministry, and God is using us in different part of India. And I praise God for his call in our life this morning. We have three children, they are in different places. God is using them. This morning, let us, without losing much time, let us turn to the word of God. For our short meditation, I would like to uh, read a scripture. This is from the Second Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 6 to 10. Actually, the entire chapter is relevant to my preaching. Uh, due to lack of time, I'm not going into that. But we will read uh, verse 6 to 10. My wife, Alice, will help me in reading that. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness. Made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, 
struck down but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Christ death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Praise God. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for bringing us together in your presence as we have read out this scripture. Lord, speak to us. Bless us all, all of us together. Your name will be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I praise God for this wonderful scripture. Apostle Paul is reminding believers in Corinth on how to respond to the challenging situations that life may present. Though they were facing troubles, persecutions, and unexpected challenges in life, he exhorts them to be strong and untired from his own experiences. Verse 1, if you read, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. The central theme of 2 Corinthians is the relationship between suffering and the power of the Spirit in Paul's apostolic life, ministry, and message when his opponents had questioned his motives and his personal courage. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 23 to 33, if you read, he lists out the sufferings he had to undergo, but never he was discouraged because he had an eternal hope. We are brothers and sisters. We are not ordinary people. This is what Paul wanted to tell us this morning. We are not ordinary people. We are very different from other people when it comes how we handle the challenges of life. Paul says that we are special because we are custodians of a great treasure. Hallelujah. We are custodians of a great treasure. So we are going to speak about that, how we are precious. The message I have entitled as, we are precious. How we are precious? Because we are custodians of a great treasure in us. This is what Paul is talking to them. If you just look, around, look about Muslims, for a Muslim, being a custodian of the key of Holy Kaaba in Mecca, you must have seen that, you know, Muslims all over the world, they're looking towards Mecca. And when they pray, they look towards Mecca and uh, they pray. And if you, if you see people go to Mecca, they make surround, they pray surrounding this holy Kaaba, a small room in the middle of uh, this main mosque in Mecca. They are rounding, surrounding that, uh, uh, that, that, that small room and, uh, and praying and, uh, and worshipping their Allah. You know, that so small room has great, great significance. If you if study the history, you know, to keep the key for that room, is a big you know, position. Ordinary people cannot have it. So it is believed that Prophet Muhammad entrusted that noble task to one of his close friends. His name is Kusai bin Kila bin Murra. And now this key is holding by his grandsons, his descendants. They are the one keeping. So it's a privilege. Nobody can go and open it. It's a 35 centimeter key, a golden key, 18. Uh, carrot, carrot uh, 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 key with the uh, nickel plated. The one who holding that key has a great position. Jesus in, in his one of his dialogue with Peter said, I am giving you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The Roman Catholic Church believe that it is literal key and the key is with St. Peter. And the Pope is the current custodian of that key. But those who closely study the Word of God Bible knows that the key is nothing but the preaching of the gospel, which he first used on the day of Pentecost and a group of 3,000 people entered into the kingdom of God. This responsibility, this key is given to all of us, all his disciples, including we believers in the 21st century. We are custodian of this great treasure. So we need to be privileged. We need to be known. We need to be proud of being such a privileged people. In 1 Peter 2, 9, we read that, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him 
who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light hallelujah if you look at the life of the saints in the in the bible there is a lot of difference in how old testament saints and new testament saints responded to challenges when they faced in their life if you look at the bible how old testament saints you know they 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 they, they, they faced the challenges the old testament saints except in the case of joseph or daniel all others have either murmured discouraged or questioned god in their troubles if you look at the life of elijah he wanted to die if you look at the life of jonah he wanted to die in the midst of problems when problems come come on the life of moses he was angry with god and in the life of david he had lamented many times that's what all the psalms we are reading Jeremiah, there is a book, this lamentation. Why God like this? So, if you look in the Old Testament, you can see there are many saints who complained to God when they had difficult situation. But uh, something very surprising in the New Testament. If you look at the life of New Testament saints, we have no story of any saints have neither murmured nor questioned God in the midst of their trials. Hallelujah. If you look at the first martyr who is Stephen in Acts 7, verse 56, we read that he said, I see the heaven and the heaven open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. He said, The heaven is giving me a standing ovation. That was his last word when stones were you know throwing at him, when he was bleeding. That was his response. He had heavenly visions. If you look at the life of Apostle John in Revelation chapter 1, we see that for the sake of gospel, he was sent into exile in Patmos. Patmos, the meaning is lifeless or barren. He did not say any negative words, but he was in the spirit and saw the heavenly visions. We read that on the day of the Lord, I was in the spirit and worshiping God. Hallelujah. And he saw heavenly visions. That is what we read the book of Revelation. If you look at the life of Peter, one of the apostles, in First Peter chapter one verse seven, we read that apostle he is saying these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire test and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul Peter is saying the trials that we are going through is like gold is purified. Hallelujah. Like purification of gold. This is something good that is happening in my life. If you look at the life of Paul in Acts 20, 24, he says that, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Hallelujah. See, I have taken only a few examples saying all these saints in the New Testament, we see how they responded when they passed through troubles. The reason behind this is that in the midst of troubles and persecutions, we are not tired or perplexed because we have a good role model before us in the New Testament. In the New Testament, believers have a good role model. Who is that role model? He is none but our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Hebrew 4.14, that's why we read, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet to be at eight, he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hallelujah. When facing calamity or disaster, the follower of God has access to the very throne of heaven. We have access to the very throne room of heaven. Hallelujah. That is the privilege God has given us. We New Testament believers, we always can run to that throne of grace and 
and put all our supplications and we can receive an answer because our Jesus Lord is there before us. Hallelujah. This evening, my dear brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Apostle Paul was encouraging his fellow believers, reminding them through his life not to be tired, but rather face it like a good soldier. Here in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9, Paul says, we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. So if you read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 33, it gives the details of his suffering. He's just summarizing into four words here what he suffered. But if you read chapter 11, uh, uh, verse 23 to 33, to the details, how he went through that situation. Dear brothers and sisters, we are in a situation of, as Paul says, we are struck down. Or we can say in our language, we are locked down. You know, this is a, it's a worldwide problem, not only people in America, we here in Bangalore, in all over the world, people are locked down. More than two months, we have been locked down. You can imagine the difficulty that is facing, especially uh, in India what people are facing. People are walking thousands of miles to reach their homes after lockdown because there is no end for lockdown. It is being continued and renewed again and again. Hundreds of people die on the way. A lot of people are suffering. Praise the Lord. This lockdown situation, this evening, this morning, as you listen to me, as you listen to the word of God, your life must be, might be a lockdown situation. Might be a situation you are locked down, perplexed, Maybe you are confused about a lot of things about your health. Maybe you are worried about your future. You are worried about the, uh, the, 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 the security and future of your children. A lot of things can be there. That's it bothering you this morning. But let us pray that we have a good God. Lord Jesus Christ is with us. We see in John 20, 19, when the saints, when the apostles were locked down, they were sitting in a room, perplexed, uh, they were in fear of the enemies. But we see as they were in that situation and Jesus appeared to them in that situation and strengthened them. He gave them peace. He gave and told them, you know, peace be with you. When they saw him, they were joyful. And they commissioned them. Just as my father sent me, I am sending you. Renewed their mission. He gave them a new hope. And we read that he put on, on them and said, receive the Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It was a promise renewed on that day. And we know that it was just the beginning on the day of Pentecost. They received the power of the Holy Spirit in full measure. Hallelujah. This morning, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are worried about something, and you are, you, if you are in a locked up, lockdown situation, hallelujah, the presence of God is coming into your room. God is coming into your room. This Zoom meeting doesn't mean that the presence of God is not there. Many times we have a misunderstanding that the presence of God comes when we come for a corporate worship in the church building. No, in New Testament there is no such teaching. Wherever two or three gather in my name, it is his promise that I'll be in the midst of you. Midst of you. This morning, you are locked down in your house, wherever you are sitting in two or three, as a family, wherever you are sitting, I pray that the presence of God is coming into your house right now. Can you take the hand of your, your wife or husband or children and say, yes, our God is in our midst. Our God is in our home. Yes, the Lord has come to our family this morning as he promised his presence is here. How many of you believe that? Can you shout praise the Lord with me? Can you shout hallelujah with me? Let there be praises and glory in your home. Let there be shout of joy in your home. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters who are not alone. Hallelujah. His awesome presence is there right now in your room. Hallelujah. We need to rejoice. We need to worship. Hallelujah. As we worship, we will see the presence of God. Hallelujah. Come into our heart and make us peaceful, joyful, and recommissioning us. And he is going to breathe the spirit on us this morning. He is going to strengthen you this morning. Hallelujah. If you look around the world, because of COVID, people all over the world is in panic. If you, you know, if you look around in India or any country, we can see that the schools are closed from having regular classes. Major 
events have been cancelled, celebrations are being rescheduled, churches, temples, mosques, and other places of worship are closed, and all mode of transportation and has been cancelled. Preachers and pastors are not preaching anymore, except for a few that share at Zoom meetings like me I am doing. Hallelujah. What is it that we are trying to stop and are afraid might happen? Nations with all their military capabilities are unable to prevent this unseen enemy, a tiny coronavirus. Roaming around without any control or medicine so far, people are worried about their future and, post and the possibility of their own death or fear the death of their loved ones. Yeah, this is a serious thing. Either you are worried about yourself, what will happen to me? Or you are worried about your dear ones far away from you, what will happen to them? Yet, as believers, we have the antidote to the fear of death. His name is Jesus Christ. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He is our only hope in the midst of all hopelessness. Hallelujah. Let us have reasons to rejoice. We are not ordinary people. We are purchased people. We are peculiar people. Oh, and we are preserved for something, for something very special. We belong to him, my dear friends. Someone said like this, if we look at the world, we are distressed. If we look at self in ourselves, we are depressed. If we look at Jesus, we have the rest. If you look at the world, we are distressed. Because all bad news, all the news is bombarded with the bad news. You know, the media, the more you read, the more you will be distressed. If you look at yourself, you will start saying, you know, self-pity. Oh, I didn't get that medicine. My appointment was there in the hospital. I could not go. What will happen to me? You know, you will feel depressed. But this morning, we have a right place to look into. That is, if you look at Jesus, we have the rest. That's why in Matthew eleven twenty eight, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning we have come to the right place. Our God is in our midst. Our Lord is with us. And he has brought you here this morning to give you rest. The worldly people respond to their trials in a distressed way. You must have heard about a billionaire businessman. His name is Joy in Dubai. His name was Joy, but he did not have the joy. He lost joy. Though his name is Joy, the corona stress pushed him from the 14th floor of his office. And he ended his life two weeks back. If he had little hope to find somewhere, he would have not done that tragic thing. But God's people respond to their troubles in a different way. In the midst of troubles, we have a great hope and refuge in our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In 2 Timothy 1.12, Paul says, That is why I am suffering as I am. And this is no cause for shame. Because I know whom I have believed. And I'm convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to me until that day. Hallelujah. The, his trust is refuge. is called hope in Christ. That's why. Let us uh, come back to the text. Let us look to the, the text as I mentioned. We are not ordinary people, but we are custodians of great treasure. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, we read that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel. Underline, I say, the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So here in verse 4, Paul is speaking about the light of the gospel displays the glory of Christ in our heart. And in verse 6, we read that, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. The light that is shining in our heart is the face of Christ. Hallelujah. And verse 7, we read that, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. Another translation we read that 
the extraordinary power from God. Hallelujah. So we have seen two things very important in this study. The whole chapter is relevant, but I will just take these two important points. Number one, the light of the gospel. That is a treasure in our heart. Paul is talking, Paul is saying, the whole world is in darkness without God. The, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the people, but for us, we are in the light because the light of the gospel has shined in our heart that display the presence of Jesus in our heart. And number two, the treasure that we have is extraordinary power in us. That's what Paul says. The extraordinary power within us, the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the second most important treasure that God has given us. So we have the word of God, the power of the word of God, the gospel, or in other words, hallelujah, Jesus himself in us. The word of God, logos, the living form of the word of God is Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, by the word of God, the, the presence of Jesus is in us. And also, he has given us the power of the Holy Spirit within us. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. Do not depart from Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem till you receive the promise my Father has given to you. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall receive power. Then you will be my witness in all over the world. Hallelujah. So that is the treasure we have. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. These are two things in this text that we want to discuss. And, uh, uh, and But also... You know, 2 Corinthians 3, 5, we read that not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves. Paul is talking about our competency. And Paul says this competency is a gift from God. This comes from God, the competency we have. When we speak about competency, your money, your possession, your children, your, uh, your, 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 your wife, your house, your car, all those possessions you have made you competent. If you are someone in the society, if you are competent, you can say, I'm competent. I'm able to stand in, uh, on my own feet. You have, you have your own possessions. Whatever you do, how you add it to your competency. I can tell you, they are all God's gift we are enjoying and we have nothing to boast about anything. Hallelujah. I'm not going to talk about the third thing, um, our competency, but I will speak about the light of the glorious gospel and the Holy Spirit. These two gifts we will discuss and that these are the two things make us precious before God. Number one, we read about the work of the word or the salvation. How we are saved? We are saved by the power of the word of God. In Matthew 13, 44, we read about a merchant. He is looking for a precious pearl. And when he found it, we read that he sold all his possessions and got it for himself. You know that. We know that. That precious pearl is none but our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior, he is born into our hearts by the work of the imperishable seed as we read in 1 Peter 1.23. The imperishable seed, that is the word of God. Romans 10.17, we read that consequently, faith comes from hearing the message or the word of God. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. And in verse 14, we read that how then can they call on the one they have not believed? And how they can believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Jesus, as I mentioned, who is Logos, is the living form of the word of God. The return form of the Bible, of the word of God, is that you carry it with us. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, he is born to your hearts by the power of the imperishable seed that is the word of God and his presence we experience in our lives as the words speak to us every now and then. In Hebrew 4, 12, we read that for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, 
joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart hallelujah the word of god is powerful the word of god bring holistic healing to our body soul and spirit hallelujah this morning as you listen to the word of god hallelujah it should not be you know abstract from you somewhere in your shelf or all of us have many versions of bible with us that will do nothing for you that is not going to help you in any way this morning if you have your bible with you take it in your hand say hold it in your hand and say this verse with me make it realistic make it personalized the word of god that is in you in the form of jesus rema we receive the revelation that is there the word of god is in us in as the living form of jesus and the return form is logos the word of god is with us and we believe that this is the word of god that regenerated us that caused us to be born again if this is the word of god what is its power how is it relevant to you hold it and say hebrew for tell we read for the word of god is alive and active sharper than any double edged sword it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart hallelujah if you believe that the word of god that you carry has this power as we mentioned it is alive it is active it is sharper it penetrates it judges it is powerful my dear brothers and sisters the word of god is not an easy thing it's a weapon it is a great weapon it is it has power it has the power to heal you right now as you listen to me this morning if you are disappointed if you are worried if you are stressed because of the situation if you are worried about your future if you are thinking about your children and other things this morning god the holy spirit want to minister to you because the word of god hallelujah he send his word and heal his people hallelujah this morning i want to pray for you in the name of jesus as you sit in your room and watching me as you sit in your room and meditate this word it is not just for a preaching you have heard many preaching there are many preachers around the world day and night you listen god's word preached by people and you know thousands of sermons but this morning i am not preaching a sermon but the holy spirit want to minister to you laraba shantara regadana baudala bashara in the name of jesus i pray lord as i minister to these people that the power of the holy spirit that the power of the word of god penetrate into their life and it touch them and heal them right now praise so let the comfort come into their heart let the holy spirit minister to them for god let the power of the word heal them touch and heal them they jesus said like this by his stripes the word of god say by his stripes you are healed this morning god want to heal you god want to minister to you that's why you are there if you are sitting at home in a lazy manner my dear brothers and sisters you mind it the presence of god is there we are not having a fun through zoom i'm not talking to you from india at this middle of the night is not a fun but the holy spirit has a message for you this morning god want to minister to you if you do, if you never experience this presence in your life in a personal way this morning the word comes to you straight hallelujah god want to touch you and give you whatever the feeling whatever may be the mindset you have take it away take the word as the precious word god has filled this word in your heart this word is there to minister to you to help you to heal you to sustain you to take you into different dimension god is going to do that because this is the holy bible hallelujah i have a friend when i was in the gulf in saudi arabia i had a friend he happened to have the disease meningitis meningitis disease he was in the hospital for 14 days he was in coma stage while he was in the coma stage uh, you know we thought his life is being taken away we have been praying as a church we prayed together and one day god touched him and healed him and he came out when he came out i asked him achan how did you come out what was your feeling when you were in coma stage what was your feeling did you feel anything did you have any memory and he said no i was totally out of my memory but sometime in my in my subconscious i used to have little memory coming 
in my subconscious when little memory come i used to memorize the word that was in my heart i am the god that heal you by my stripes you are healed i used to cling on these promises and i came out hallelujah my dear brothers if god can do that to that brother god can do to you this morning in your life if you believe hallelujah can you shout a big hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah of course the paul says this light shines in the darkness god has called us to shine in this dark world jesus said i am the light of the world and he said his disciples who accepted him that now you are the light of the world yes he made us light to shine wherever you are placed okay you are in california sacramento we are in bangalore we are all placed in different part of the world you know if you travel through the streets you will see the the, the post carrying big lights in america there are big lights in the streets in india also we have street light we say if this street lights are all brought to one place and put it in a one place and put the bulb and switch on what is the benefit it will light only in one area but the government has done it very carefully very uh, using their wisdom they have not put it in one place they have put it in every 100 meter you will see one post with a bulb 100 meter so that every corner of the city which is in darkness has a light god has placed you in that place this morning i tell you why god took you to sacramento if i am saying the place correct he god has taken you to california if god has taken to some other city of usa and god has placed me in in a city in bangalore god has a plan because hallelujah jesus he is the light of the world he is in me i am the light of the world now, now the light of god shines through me that's why god has put you and me in the places where there is darkness you are not there accidentally god has put you there with a purpose this morning hallelujah let us submit our hearts lord hallelujah the light of the word of god will bring holistic healing to the life to the body soul and spirit of people so we have a responsibility to pray for one another god has put you there with a responsibility to shine for him and pray for one another this morning let us remember you know we need to pray for others intercessory prayer is a it's a very important prayer in the bible these days we get lot of time as we are spending at home we pray we do intercessory prayer than any other time in our life when we go through this lockdown praise the lord so let us thank god for the word of god hallelujah this is a great pressure he has put in our heart let me run fast the second thing the holy spirit is a great pressure in roman 5:5 we read that and hope does not put us to shame because god's love has been poured out into our heart through the holy spirit who has been given to us second timothy 1:14 we read that god the good deposit that was entrusted to you god it with the help of the holy spirit who is in us in verse 16 we read that for this reason i remind you to fan into flame the gift of god which is in you through the laying on of my hands and verse 7 we read that what the spirit god gave us does not make us timid but give us power love and self discipline hallelujah in first corinthians 3:16 we read that don't you know that you yourself are god's temple and that god's spirit dwell in us in the midst if anyone destroy god's temple god will destroy that person for god's temple is sacred and you together are that temple this morning let me tell you i have read several verses and trying to tell you that that gift that precious gift is put into us we are his temple why the holy spirit is in us what make us different from others the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit is put into our heart so that we are different we carry this great treasure my dear brothers i have read from first corinthian first corinthian 316 don't you know that you are the temple of the holy spirit paul is asking them in a questioning manner don't you know don't you understand you are the temple of the holy spirit yes my body is the temple of the holy spirit if you come to india if you come to agra you will see taj mahal have you how many of you have seen taj mahal 
yeah it's a beautiful edifice it's a wonderful monument made there by mughal kings uh it is it's a wonderful build, uh, edifice you see if you look it from outside it look beautiful made out of white marble it's so beautiful look i have no time to explain about that shah jahan made it in remembrance memory of his wife mumtaz if you go there such beautiful building even when trump came to india they visited that place is so significant all the leaders go and visit if you go there it looks very attractive when you go down go down down few steps down when you go to the ground floor the basement you go there is no life it's dark there are two tombs two dead bodies there buried there this is the place it looks very nice very beautiful from outside but deep within inside it is dead hallelujah this morning let me tell you my brothers and sisters you are not taj mahal you are not taj mahal the word of god says you are the temple of the holy spirit the holy spirit is in you there is life in you there is power in you you are supposed to be shining for the glory of god this morning you say i am not taj mahal i am the temple of the holy spirit there is power in me hallelujah if there is power in you god is going to use you powerfully in this days that's why all is saying a uh, peter is saying first peter 29 but you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation god special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful hallelujah light hallelujah let us submit ourselves if the power of the holy spirit is given to us if the power is within us hallelujah we read the book of ephesians chapter 1 18 to 19 you read you know the, the the magnitude of the power of the holy spirit how powerful it is it says that in verse 19 and his incomparably great power for us who believe this is available for this incomparable great power hallelujah dynamic power is available for those who believe this morning i want to tell you where it is mentioned it is it, this it, his incomparably ephesian 1 verse 19 his incomparably great power for us who believe instead of for us put your name it is available for abraham matthew it is available for sam kuti matthew it is available for you this power is available for me hallelujah because i believe that power is the same as the mighty strength let us make this was personalized hallelujah and his incomparable great power for me hallelujah who believe what is the result in verse 20 we read that this power exerted into jesus jesus christ is is in the tomb his body is dead and is buried and this power came on his body and we read that hallelujah when he exerted he raised christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places hallelujah this morning hallelujah holy spirit want to minister to you whatever the situation you are going through whatever the pain you are going through this morning god want to minister to you first i told you the word of god is there in your heart his presence is there by form of word of god and this morning his presence hallelujah is there as the holy spirit that these are the two big precious that you have most of you must have heard about aids school in texas there was there is a man called his name is aids he was a rancher he was a man who was taking care of his animals he had a lot of uh, cow and other animals he used to take care of he was a uh, he was a farmer and uh, and he was a shepherd but he was living in big poverty he did not have money he had taken loan from the bank and he and the, and the, he was in bankruptcy not pay back he was living in utter poverty one day the agencies of government came there and said mr eight we want to do a testing on your ground this barren ground this land the big land we want to do a testing we see that we doubt that there is oil deposit in this barren land he agreed you know as they dug 1000 feet they could see there is a big reserve of oil under this barren land there was a big deposit of oil and that is known as eight school in texas you know it better than me hallelujah the day he purchased the land 
he on the pressure but he lived in he lived in poverty a true believer operates on holy spirit sakaria 463 that so he said to me this is the word of the lord to serbabel not by might not by power but my spirit this morning my time is finished so i am going to close hallelujah we are special because we have the great treasure in us the holy spirit in us hallelujah if you look to all the testament in the tabernacle you will see there is a lamp stand stand the lamp stand represent the word of god and the olive oil is the holy spirit and the wick or the thread there that that that, that is shining is compared to a believer see what happened this is the represent the word of god the lamp stand represent jesus it represent the word of god and the oil inside is the holy spirit with the help of the holy spirit the cotton thread the wick always light give the light what happened when there is when there is you know no light coming when the wick is smoldering when this cotton thread is smoldering there is no light coming out the priest will come with a scissor golden scissor and cut it and pull it little more add more oil and make it shine this morning hallelujah if you think you are not burning anymore you are not hallelujah being powerful anymore if you feel you are smoldering the anointed one has the jar of the oil to pour on you and refill you to make you shine this morning that's why isaiah 42 3 read that a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out in faithfulness he will bring forth justice hallelujah this morning let us submit our heart let us pray lord if i am smoldering if there is no power in me if you think the holy spirit is not in action in me oh let us ask god oh, fill me again this morning let the power of the holy spirit uh, refresh you once again so that you will shine for the glory of god once again this morning you are not an ordinary person this morning god has chosen you someone very precious that's why you can say in second corinthians 4 8 and 9 paul says we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed like a football kick from any side it will come back to the shape again because there is power inside there is air inside because the air is inside you kick from any side it won't hurt it it will come back to its original position hallelujah you say we are perplexed but not despair we are persecuted not abandoned we are struck down but not destroyed hallelujah you hear about the bad news around but it will not come near us this morning let us pray hallelujah the holy spirit has given me a message i can speak on speak on but this morning Hallelujah. Let us close our words. Can you close your eyes? Let us pray together. Praise the Lord. If you think, hallelujah, if you are a bruised reed, if you think you are a smoldering wick, this morning God wants to minister to you. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come to your heart and make you strong this morning. Let the power of the Holy Spirit touch you once again. Let the power of the Word of God touch you once again. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, you start praising God. Hallelujah. Start worshiping God. Let the power of the Holy Spirit minister to you this morning. Hallelujah. Father God, we praise you for this wonderful time. Lord, I commit, hallelujah, the saints of this church in your precious son. I commit all the believers of eternal life, church of God, in your precious son. Lord, I commit dear pastor and his family in your precious son, Father God. Hallelujah. You touch and heal them, Father God. If anybody is worried about any issue, Lord, make them to understand they are very precious for you. Lord, use them for your glory. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Thank you for touching them by the power of the Holy Spirit and power of the word of God, Father God. Thank you for the great pressure that you have put in their heart. Make them feel that they are no more ordinary, but they are very special for you. Nothing will happen in their life without your knowledge. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because they are special for you. We commit our life in your precious. And thank you for the time you give us together. We give you all honor and glory. We ask this prayer in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Hallelujah. Can you raise your hands and say praise the Lord? Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much Hallelujah. for the opportunity.